as we approach retirement age, or certainly as we get into our 60s, we quickly find out there's some big decisions that are coming up that we need to really understand because it's going to impact us the rest of our lives. And the two major decisions, one, obviously Medicare, we need to understand exactly how our health insurance is going to work in the future. And then the other one is Social Security. And we need to really understand how to maximize our benefit so that we don't outlive our income. Very important and very stressful for a lot of people. So I'm gonna go through the Social Security piece right now and talk about when to start taking Social Security and things that you need to understand. And I'm Keith Armbrecht, founder of Medicare on Video. I help people across the country make the right Medicare choices. I can absolutely help you as well. If you stay till the end, I'll show you how to download my free book, Medicare Made Clear, will make it so much easier for you when it's time to make your Medicare choices. And when it is that time, just visit my website, medicareonvideo.com, put in your basic information, and we will email you a quote for the best Medicare supplement plan in your zip code. So it makes it very easy to get that done. Now, the next big piece in this day of retirement is Social Security. And when do we take it? And what's the right time? Should I take it early? Should I take it later? It can be very complicated and hard to understand. So there's a couple of big pieces that we really need to understand. And first piece of Social Security to understand is what's called full retirement age. Now it used to be age 65 was when Social Security started. Well, they changed that. So they, they we're living longer and, and so they have increased the age to what is your full retirement age. And full retirement age basically means full benefit age, when your benefit is going to be at that 100% mark. So if you look at this chart here, you can see it has incrementally changed these last few years. We're getting closer to the end of it right now. So right now, if you were born in 1960 or after, your full retirement age is 67. So no longer 65, it's now 67. And now the choices, I mean, you can still take your Social Security as early as age 62, but does that make sense? And when you look at the chart that they put out at Social Security, it shows you exactly how that functions. And when we look at this chart, it shows us, you can see at age 67, there's no change. So we can have our benefit 100% at age 67. And when you're looking at the monthly benefit number on this chart, it, it varies. So th this is kind of an average of it. I'm gonna show you what mine looks like in just a minute where it's certainly higher than this. So you can max out bigger than what this number is. But you can see on this chart, if you were to start at age 62, it's 30% less than what you would get at your full retirement age. So does it make sense to take it at age 62? Because you'd have that check coming in every month for five years. So, you know, it, it's worth thinking about and understanding. There's a couple caveats here where we absolutely do not want to do that. Uh, but you can see the difference in age. You know, you may not need to 62, but at 64 things might change, 65 things might change. And it's just very important to understand the difference. You can also see if you don't take it at 67 and you wait until age 70, it's gonna be a 24% increase in that number. So I'm gonna talk about break even in just a second on if you took it early, when would you break even? Uh, you can see the numbers over here on the side as well. And again, the difference of the numbers makes it a little different. My numbers are a little different on the break even. I'll tell you those in just a second as well. But when you look at this, it's important to understand exactly what we're trying to accomplish. Now, when we talk about taking it early, big thing to understand is if you are still working, if you're still making income, you're likely not going to want to take it early because Social Security will penalize you for that pretty significantly. So the line for income while you're drawing Social Security before your full retirement age is $19,560. So if you are making more than $19,500 per year, you're not likely gonna to wanna to take Social Security because what's gonna happen is Social Security is going to 
take back a dollar for every two dollars you earn in Social Security, so 50% of your benefit for every dollar that you make over that $19,500. So that, that's gone. That's money that, that you're giving back. So you're making money and then you're giving it back in your Social Security. It doesn't make any sense to take your Social Security at 62 or 64 or 66 if your full retirement age is 67, if you still have adjusted gross income. And that's what it would come out to on your tax return is your adjusted gross income. So we need to understand that. If we're still making money and working or have money coming in from other sources that counts as adjusted gross income on our taxes, we likely aren't going to want to take our Social Security. So that, that's certainly one reason I would never take it at 65. I would never take it at 62 because I still will have income coming in and, and I hopefully will have income coming in past full retirement age. But once you hit full retirement age, then income's okay. So, but there's another part of that we'll talk about in just a second. So if you are working, have income coming, take very seriously, understand that $19,500 limit and because you will give that money back to Social Security and that just doesn't really make any sense. Now, if you are at full retirement age and you are still making income, hopefully that will be the case, now we gotta worry about taxes. So does my Social Security get taxed? And you would likely think, well, no, that, that's something that you've already paid your taxes into and it's coming back to you now. Why would they tax my Social Security? Well, they do and it's based on income, and you can see how it works. It, it can be up to 50% of your benefits, so you have income levels of 25,000 to 34,000 for an individual, or 32 to 44,000 for a married couple filing jointly. So it can be up to 85% of your Social Security check. So if you make more than $34,000 individually, or more than $44,000 as a couple, they're gonna tax 85% of your Social Security benefit. So it's just like getting the check from an employer, you're gonna pay federal income tax on that Social Security amount. So we need to understand that because it, it can certainly affect our retirement choices. Same in Medicare, you know, if you make a certain amount of income Medicare Part B is income adjusted. Medicare Part D is income adjusted. Certainly understand that we're gonna pay more in our retirement if we still have what would be considered, I guess, significant income, over $44,000 as a joint filing couple, which that's not quite considered significant in my book. Uh, so you can see that. So if you're individual, if, you're, if you have $50,000 in income and you get $1,500 a month from Social Security, you would pay 85%, you would pay taxes on your 85% of your $18,000 in annual benefits or $15,300. So you're gonna pay taxes on that amount. It can make a significant difference. Now, it doesn't stop there. If you live in one of these 12 states, they add taxes onto your Social Security. And it's an interesting list of states. It's not the states that I would have thought that would have high tax rates, but these states, also go after your Social Security if you make that same income. So again, important to understand this stuff so that you can plan accordingly. Now, when we talk about distributions, I'll show you, if you go to My Social Security, you have a, an account called My Social Security, and I'll put the link in the description below in the video. Really easy to calculate this stuff. It shows you, you know, everything that you kind of need to know. It shows you if you have your 40 credits in, if you know your income is correct from before and then it shows you a pretty good calculator on how much you will get in social security you know whether you take it at 62 or 66 or 67 or 70 you can plug it in any way you want it and and this is mine you can see you know what you can do with it and it's certainly a very helpful tool now my break even points come out to if I were to take it at 62, but again, I'll, I'll have income, so I'm, I'm never gonna take it at 62. But if I did, the time that it would take me as opposed to taking it at 67, where that break even comes into play, would be at age 76 and eight months. So it's a long time. And that also doesn't take into account 
you know, let's say you took it at 62 and you just invested it and didn't spend it and how much that investment will add on to your income going forward, it would increase that break even point for sure. Now, if I took it at age 65 versus 67, my break even wouldn't come until 78. So again, that's 11 years before it's gonna break even, but we have to think about, you know, how long are we gonna live? And, you know, every month after age 78, we would want that increased amount for sure. Uh, you know, my mom is currently in her upper 80s, and, you know, it's very likely these days that we're gonna live into our 90s, and unless we have some real serious family history, you know, we can almost look to that fact. Now, certainly we can go quicker than that, but we gotta play the long game and to kind of rather be safe than sorry. Now, the other choice is, do you take it at full retirement age? or do you wait until age 70? 70 is the maximum that you can take for Social Security. So mine would be, you can see here on the chart where at 67, my monthly amount is 3047. And then at age 70 would be 3918. That's, you know, another 900 bucks a month. That's pretty significant. So the break even on that for me would be at age 80 and six months. So a little over 10 and a half years to break even, but you know, going forward, 81, 82, 85, you know, it'd be another $900 a month. And this also doesn't take into account cost of living increases. So Social Security does have cost of living increases. They're usually pretty small, two or 3%, but it does increase. But obviously inflation, and we know about inflation right now, uh, it's gonna play a part as we go down the road. So, you know, these are just, there, there's really not a right or wrong answer. So, except for like at age 62, only if you are without income and you need it to pay your rent and to pay your food bill and your electric bill and everything else, certainly something to consider. But if you're still working and you have income, no, you don't want to do that because they're going to take your social security money back. It's like just giving it back to them, which would be wrong. You know, same at age 65, if it's before full retirement age, it's all on that income thing. So if you make income, you're not gonna wanna do it. If you don't and you need the money, then absolutely, it's probably a pretty good idea. So that's exactly where we stand on Social Security. I hope this gives you a pretty good idea. Definitely get into the My Social Security account, play with it, understand it. That way there aren't any surprises when we come down the road. And again, understanding Medicare big, big deal because Medicare is not free and we need to understand what it's going to cost in our retirement age. And especially if we make, you know, what is considered substantial income and it's, it's called IRMA where they income adjust part B premiums, part D premiums. And, you know, it can be a shock to some. So certainly visit MedicareOnVideo.com. We'll get you a quote on your Medicare supplement plan. I'm happy to help with all things Medicare. It's what I do. It's how I make my living. There's no cost to you to let me help you. So hopefully you'll do that. And I hope you found all this helpful. Stay tuned. I'll show you how to download my book. Have a great day. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I hope you found it very helpful. A couple of other things that you'll find very helpful is first, download a copy of my free book, Medicare Made Clear. I put a lot of time, a lot of effort into this book. You'll find it very helpful for everything that you need for Medicare now and in the future. It has videos in the book, has all the links that you need for signing up and everything else that you'll need going forward. So take just a minute, go to medicareonvideo.com forward slash free book. You can download it right now and save it on your computer. You'll have it for now and in the future. And then down the road, when it's time to renew your Medicare supplement plan, we always wanna shop around. So every year, it makes sense to do a Medicare price check. And I have a website specific to that, www.medicarepricecheck.com, where we will compare your current plan and see if we can get the same plan at a lower price. And a lot of times, we can do that. So it makes sense to visit medicarepricecheck.com every year. We'll do a quick comparison, let you know if it makes sense and then we take it from there. I hope you found all this helpful. Have a fantastic day. Hey, don't go anywhere. These are some of my most recent videos right here. You can also find the link right below this video to download my book, Medicare Made Clear, absolutely free. 
You can also subscribe to my channel right here. So please, download my book, watch some videos, subscribe to the channel. Have a great day.